Hey guys, Dalsy here and welcome to a tutorial on how to use open broadcaster software for live streaming games such as Minecraft. Basically when I'm live streaming I get this question a lot. What program do you use? And I tell people I use OBS. They're like, oh, OBS, how do I use that program? Because um, it's slightly daunting when you uh, first come to live streaming. You're not sure what you're doing. And I get that question asked so many times that I figured I'll do a tutorial on it. So OBS uh, is a free open source software for live streaming and recording. Um, in my opinion, it is on par with XSplit and uh, it has one massive advantage of XSplit and that is it's free. And so that's why I use it and that's why I recommend it. And it, I've never had any problems with it. So um, I recommend it to everyone for uh, live streaming and recording. Anyways, uh, the first thing you wanna do is obviously download the program. Got to come here to their SourceForward page, uh, download the program, it's free as said, and uh, it doesn't have any viruses, so don't worry about that. So uh, once you've downloaded the program and installed it, you want to come over to here, and this is basically it. Um, you're going to start off with a blank slate uh, ready for you to customize and uh, configure. Before you do that, however, you want to do two things. You want to come to their website and you want to go to their help page and go to estimator. And this is basically a page where you can um, get a bunch of settings recommended to you depending on how fast your internet is and uh, how fast your computer is. So you want to select what type of GPU you have, um, your graphics card, what type of game you're going to be streaming. So for Minecraft, despite it being such a simple, nice looking game, it is highly resource dependent. So you're going to have I hit I'm high motion and uh, then you want to do your how fast your upload speed is so you're going to come to test uh, speedtest.net links over here and uh, you just want to check what your upload speed is so completely disregard what your download speed is it's not necessary also it's uh, worth noting that uh, speedtest.net gives you results in uh, megabits per second and open broadcaster software wants it in kilobits per second so you're gonna have to do some maths very simple maths though um, you can pretty much work it out in your head it's just basically adding a zero on the end so as you can see we have a upload speed of 4.86 megabits per second in uh, kilobits that's 4860 so very simple 4860 kilobits per second so enter it in then you want to know what your uh, screen size slash in-game resolution is. Uh, now, you want to set this to whatever your monitor size is. So my monitors are 1920 by 1080, uh, though I usually stream in 720p. So completely disregard what you're streaming in. Just go for your monitor size and hit recommended settings. And it's going to give you all these uh, settings on your GPU, your game, and your network. Um, so it, it's pretty useful. So I, I stream in 720p, but obviously I, it says I can stream in 1080p, but I decide not to. Anyways, we're going to come uh, back to OBS and we're going to start configuring it. So, you know, I usually get these uh, recommended settings up next to me. I've got multiple monitors, so I can do that. Anyways, you want to select your language, obviously English, if you speak English and if you speak any other language, then they've got support for you. Um, here you've got your profile. So if you have different stream, uh, live streaming channels that you stream to, for example, I have a Twitch TV one, I have one on YouTube, and then I'll also have uh, one for my server. So I can set three different profiles uh, for each live streaming channel, depending on what it is. So uh, that's good if you have multiple live streaming channels, select your profile. Um, you can select if you want uh, notifications or if you want it to be in your notification area. Uh, then you wanna to come to encoding. Here you want to basically um, enter in uh, what you need to stream for. So if you're going to stream in HD, and when I say HD I mean 720p, you're only going to need about uh, 2500 uh, kilobits per second. That's what I use and it seems to go great for me. And uh, so for HD streaming in 720p, 2500 seems to work. If you're going to do it in, let's say, uh, 480p, I usually stream at 1000. I've never streamed above um, 720p, so I can't recommend 1080p, but there is guides out there for you, so just Google it, you should get something. The quality balance is basically the compromise it's going to make between using a ton of your resources and in it, internet speed to get you good quality, and uh, obviously, compromising that to give you slightly less better quality but uh, keeping your internet speed going and so I recommend sending it to about 7 or 8 that seems to do the trick I've never needed it at 10 obviously if you have a slow internet speed uh, you want to set it lower than that maybe 5 or 4 um, or lower if, <laughs> if needed but for me I set it at 8 and never touch your buffer size leave it at uh, the default settings uh, it, it's not needed to be touched 
um, so I wouldn't even bother. But if you know exactly what you're doing, you need to change it, then obviously you've got the option to. Uh, for your audio encoding, um, the, the way it goes is the higher it is, the better quality audio, uh, but obviously the more resource dependent it's gonna be. I recommend hitting it at 128. You're never really gonna notice too much difference between that unless you've got a uh, Super Pro headset. And uh, that's what I use and no one's ever complained about it for me. In your broadcast settings, you want to select uh, whether you're going to live stream or record. So file output only is recording only. Um, so obviously we're doing this for live stream, but obviously that option is there if you want to record. Pretty simple, just select where you want to put it to. Um, so if you come to your streaming service, you've got some options here. Uh, all depends on what you use. If you don't use any of these, then you hit custom and you enter in your server, you're entering your stream key and whatnot. Uh, but for me, I'm going to use Twitch TV. I'm going to select my server that's closest to me. So that's London, UK. And uh, then I'm going to get my stream key. And the way this works is you come to twitch.tv forward slash broadcast for Twitch TV. You get over here, you click show key and it's going to bring up your stream key. Uh, this is obviously a fake one that I've made uh, for the sake of this recording. Don't double click it because it's going to leave a gap at the bottom. Just select it manually. Um, it only takes a bit longer and uh, it means you're not going to have any problems in the future. So enter that in. Control C, Control V. Uh, you want to auto reconnect, it's pretty useful. Um, leave it at 10, it's, I've never had to change that. If your stream needs to have a delay, you can change the delay in seconds here. Uh, but again, I've never had to delay my stream, so never hit that. Um, and then, you know, if you want to hit minimize network impact, that's basically going to try and uh, basically stop you from using all your internet. But for me, it's not a problem, so I never select that. If your website has a dashboard, which most do, uh, you want to enter that in. So Twitch TV's um, dashboard is at twitch.tv forward slash dashboard. <laughs> very, very simple. Um, and that's basically just going to make a option pop up here and you can click that. It'll take you to your dashboard. Um, then what you want to do is you want to, uh, if you want to, you can set a hotkey to start streaming or stop streaming, though I've never had the need to. You can also save your live streams to file if you want to. So you can save them if, you, if that's something you want to do. I haven't had to mess with that. Anyways, come to your video. You want to select which graphics card you're going to use. Obviously, if you have multiple, you can do that. If you have a single one, then it's going to select it for you. Um, then you want to do your base resolution. Now, as said before, you want to put this as your monitor size, not what you're going to be streaming in. So my monitor size is 1080p, so I have it in my monitor size. And then if I want to stream in 720p or lower, um, or lower basically than my monitor, I come to resolution downscale and I downscale it to what I want to. So uh, I'm going to stream in 720p. P. I've never had to mess with a filter, so I don't recommend messing with it. And uh, 30 FPS is basically great for streaming anything, but if you need to go higher than 30 FPS, then you can do. Uh, I think this goes up to 60, does it? Or does it go above 60? Yeah, it goes up to 60, but if you need to go above 60, again, there is options for that. But I recommend leaving it at 30, especially if you don't have as fast of a computer. Um, so then we want to come to audio. We want to select what our desktop audio device is. That's basically your speakers, what you hear. Uh, so your in-game volume, so you want to select whatever that may be. For me, it's my uh, digital output cable. And then with your microphone, you want to select what you want to have. So obviously, I have quite a few choices, but I'm going to use my Yeti stereo microphone. You can enable a push to talk key if that's what you want to do. You can also uh, put a mute your microphone key and mute your desktop key, uh, which is quite useful if you need to. And you can also force it to go into mono. Uh, these are basically um, decibel boosts if you fancy boosting your microphone or your audio. Um, I've never had to mess with that, but remember that's decibels, and so you put it up, it's going to significantly increase, so no, don't set it too high. Um, I would never go above six with that. And uh, if you need to put an offset on your mic, you can do that, but I doubt you will have to. Um, with advanced, you want to come over here, and basically you want to leave it alone. Don't touch advanced, really. Um, it's it's probably going to cause you more problems than it's going to fix. Uh, though, if you do have a multi-core CPU, then hit multi-threading optimizations. Um, never touch your CPU preset, pretty much. 
don't touch it. Um, ultra fast basically makes your computer run super fast, but it takes away the quality because it's not rendering it as well. Um, likewise, slow is practically the opposite. It's going to render your uh, gameplay really, really, really uh, detailed, but it's going to take forever to render it, and it's then going to try live streaming. It. It's going to take lots of bit rate and lots of CPU. Uh, so don't touch it. Leave it at very fast. That's what I do. Never, ever had a problem. Um, you've got some more options here if you need to change them. Again, I recommend never, ever, ever touching the advanced section unless you want to switch this. And that's my uh, recommendation. Here you've got some options with your microphone. So uh, I don't quite understand this, but obviously if you do a bit of audio stuff and you're quite particular, you've got that there as well. Anyways, now we've configured OBS, uh, we want to come to our scenes. So you can add multiple scenes if you want to. And the way that works is, um, let's say you have your normal streaming scene and then you have a scene with an image that says, we'll be back in one minute. Um, then you can just basically switch between your scenes and you can also set a hotkey if you fancy doing that as well, which is quite useful. In your sources, uh, you have a couple of options. You can Everything's right click, by the way. You right click, uh, you can add, you've got window capture, so that will capture a whole window of a program. Uh, monitor capture captures the whole monitor. Image will obviously do an image. Um, you've got text. Video capture device is great if you use DxTory or other programs like so. And then you've got game capture. So it's got inbuilt game capture as well, which is what I generally use. Uh, but I recommend if you're streaming often and you always stream the same thing, make it a global source because what it's going to do is it's just going to always have it loaded, um, which is quite useful. So you come in here, you can do your global sources here. So let's say I want to make it a global source for Minecraft. I click add. I click game capture or video capture. So video capture is for DxTory. Uh, game capture if you just want to direct, capture it directly. I'm going to call this Minecraft, obviously. Hit OK. And then I want to open up Minecraft here. I want to come up here and I want to find it. So Java Minecraft. Um, I'm going to stretch it to the screen, which is quite useful. Um, I'm going to ignore the rate aspect ratio because I want it to be full screen. And then I can, you know, toggle if I want to have my mouse there. Um, I can turn up the brightness if I need to, but generally I don't need to. Uh, so hit OK. And I can add more global sources. So as you can see, I've got quite a few here. Um, and you can also change the properties here as well if you need to. Hit OK and then go to your sources and hit add source. Uh, we're going to add Minecraft in our global source. Boom, Minecraft is now added to our live stream. However, you can't see anything. That's because you need to hit preview stream. Once you hit preview stream, you're going to see it pops up. Uh, let me just chuck Minecraft in HD because this is going to bother me. I use a free program called Sizer and that basically allows me to um, size my programs with a click like so which is really useful. Um, so now that's in HD for me. Uh, so that's pretty much ready to go. If I wanted to change the size, I hit edit scene and I can drag the sides like so. Um, because I'm rec recording, it's got rid of a red outline that's there, but normally there's a red outline around it, which is helpful. Um, I'm going to add some more scenes. So let's say I want to add my webcam, for example. Where is it? There you are. Um, hit OK. And hello, there I am. <laughs> so we're going to chuck that in the corner. Uh, probably should size that down a bit. Uh, chuck it in the corner like so. I'm going to also add a frame to go around my webcam. Um, I'm basically just setting up what I usually have for my live streams. So there's my frame. Uh, now, if I want to size this, uh, with, if I want to get rid of the aspect ratio, as you can see, it does it automatically in aspect ratio. If I hit shift, it's going to do it um, outside of it or uh, aspect ratio. So that's obviously really useful if you want to make it like rectangular or whatever. So uh, let's drag that down. I'm going to have it about that size there. And uh, then if I hit webcam down here, I can move you. And now I am inside a pretty frame. Uh, looks pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have like this little stamp that I put over it as well. Um, though I'm having troubles trying to uh, size the stamp. Because, there it is. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So I usually put my stamp there and I usually make it quite big. And uh, the reason I do that is if people are new, they can uh, know who I am and also hide my microphone behind it because, you know, I've got a pop filter. So that's just a bit of a cheeky trick. Uh, those stamps are good for, you know, if there's someone new. And then when you're done, you hit stop preview 
and you hit start streaming and that's going to start live streaming to whatever channel you've set it up to and that's how you use OBS. Um, notice you can add plugins as well. Um, they're pretty easy to set up so have a little mess around with that. Check their forums if you want a plugin. Uh, one plugin I definitely recommend is a thing called OBS Remote. Basically how this works is if I come to it, um, OBS Remote it is a uh, plugin that basically makes a window which will connect to my OBS program. It will hook into it um, and it will also hook into my live stream as well. So uh, let me just connect it. I'm going to have to log back in. It just connects via local connection, although you can do it to another computer via IP addresses. Um, though that would take a bit of um, expert configuring, so it's probably not for the uh, people who knew. And what you can do is you can control everything on your stream here. Um, you can change your scenes in here. You also have your chat. Your live stream will pop up when you're live streaming. Um, I can start previewing and if I go back to OBS, uh, it's obviously not, there we go, start preview. Thank you. And you can see that started the preview. Um, stop preview. It stopped the preview. Pretty simple, uh, great little tool. I recommend it and uh, I suggest you get it. Anyways guys, uh, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know that I did a good job and it also lets others know uh, that you found this tutorial helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I'm not an expert with this program, but I'm pretty good at working things out. So I'll try my best to help you out. Uh, they do have a forums, however, so I'd recommend checking out their forums uh, for any problems they may have. Uh, that's what I did when I had any problems, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're quick, pretty quick to respond anyway. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys on my next video. Peace.